Hey, how's it going, you guys? Game Cannon Inc. here again. Um, first order of business, gonna congratulate the winner of um, Monday, and we're gonna go over some fuse lucky and unlucky kills, and why he has changed as far as his pick rate, I believe, is going to go up significantly. And then lastly, we're gonna go over loot packs, and um, exactly what are they and um, are they a good thing or a bad thing for the meta of the game well let's start right off with congratulating uh, David is our lucky winner who earned a thirty dollar gift card to GameStop for all his gaming needs thank you for participating and um, for everyone who did entries and subscribed uh, big thank you from our team here at Game Cannon Inc uh, we're really uh, proud to start up this channel and uh, if you guys have tips for us to improve and things that you guys would like to see be sure to comment or go ahead and send a email to us and the ways that we can improve and the things that you like um, but again uh, David won and congratulate him on the $30 one and thank you for everyone who entered um, so in this video we're gonna go over <laughs> some of my fuse uh, lucky and unlucky kills. Um, the meta has kind of changed as far as um, who stays defending and how often they stay defending um, near the OBJ now. Uh, this is because you know with Jackal being able to track footsteps and Mira providing a new alternative to being able to keep an eye on the enemies. There's definitely um, more opportunities to get kills and picks while you're at the defensive side as well as it increases your possibility to be tracked and therefore an entire team hunt you down if you're leaving your footsteps elsewhere. Um, so a lot more people, unless they're Caviera, uh, are going to stay and defend it looks like. And that also boosts uh, Caviera's um, pick rate. She doesn't leave any footsteps with her silent step. So uh, Jackal can't track her unless she forgets. Or the user forgets to put that on in the prep phase as well. Um, but Fuse, I mean, with everybody clustering in the... OBJ rooms, it leaves a lot more room for his cluster grenades to do some serious damage. And um, because of this, I think you're going to find Jaeger as well being a defender that people need to bring, especially in the uh, pro game. Um, because that's the only real defense if you get some type of warning, either through camera and call out, or if you get someone that actually. Uh, sees him placing his fuse charge but besides that there's uh, little time to adjust if especially if you're hunkered down in a corner uh, say you got your um, shield up and you're between two barricaded walls which is awesome if you're trying to defend uh, with long-range rifle uh, down in your uh, little choke points but if fuse is able to get one of his grenades in there he can really um, take a toll on the team especially if they're all hunkered down in the same room you'll see in this video uh, a couple of times I'll, I'll get multiple kills just off the fuse grenades alone uh, this one isn't one of them it, uh, I see the grenade went through the window and killed me and I'm like no uh, that was total biffed on my part but um this is why I feel Fuse is going to be able uh, to be a hot commodity for people to pick. Um, the operators are just kind of geared towards staying around the objective room. And until there's any new type of operators that may, may counter or um, disguise new footsteps against Jackal, um, I don't really see it changing all that much. There is still roaming, and it's a lot more likely when you see the team uh, get spotted and you know who all the attacking operators are once Jack goes off the list or someone takes them out early it's um, really easy to see people start to take off around the map 
feel a lot more comfortable, especially in those, uh, uh, you know, five versus one scenarios or when it's down to one and you have at least three to four operators left. Seems like everybody goes nuts. They just start taking off all over the map and everybody's on a hunt because they want that last kill, you know. Oh, I got to boost my KD or, you know, um, whatever it may be. <laughs> just the thrill of actually killing someone. Um, oh, right here, guy pokes his head in and boom! Ugh. Um, but overall, I think because you have, um, these new operators in the game, you're going to want to change tactics, or at least most people have seemed to change some type of tactics. You, you already see the different maneuvers people are using to try and trick Mira or someone who's looking through Mira's, um, one-way glass they pretend they're on their cameras or their drones right in front of the mirror and then once they realize that uh, they're they're going to drop the shield uh, or drop the glass excuse me then then they pull out their weapon and just start pre-firing at the window and uh, I've seen a lot of success with this um, there's a lot of people who who now are already catching on to that so now that's changing as well but you, the point is is you can already see that people are adjusting their gameplay because of these new operators now in the last video we went over the 50 to 100 number that Ubisoft released as far as their operators going um, if the meta continues to change each time like that I think that's actually a whole lot of success for um, for the game and the developers, I mean, that's just impressive once you can have a game release and then downloadable content completely change the way people play. You can't just stick to the same tactics. Um, if it changes their way of playing, I find that very impressive. Um, but they still enjoy the game because it's the same game. You just kind of have to shake up your tactics. Um, that's impressive that, uh, to the developers. I got to give them credit right there. But then also you get some drop off because people, you know, who were once good in certain areas or with certain operators now, oh, you know, I can't, I can't, uh, use that operator anymore. That, that's kind of a bummer and I can see that happening, but I don't think anybody's going to lose sleep or not play the game over it. So props to Ubisoft for being able to change the meta with these current operators that came out. Lastly, um, we want to talk about the loot packs. Um, Ubisoft has also said that they want to have loot packs which reward people for playing uh, Rainbow Six, uh, just staying in a match until its completion. Um, the more you play, obviously, the more loot packs you get. And now, the way they're describing it sounds pretty cool. Just because, I mean, you're going to get more skins. If you're, if you're not uh, already into skins right now for your guns or the charms or whatnot, um, I don't know if it'll affect you all that much, but getting a loot pack at the end will give you a skin no matter what, whether you're into it or not. And so that, that's kind of cool because... Um, you're able to get something as a reward for just playing and I think they just want to attract and and retain the amount of people who are playing this game especially with their intentions for it um, but is it good or bad I, I can't really tell at this point I think it's a good thing but for the longevity of the game will it become a bad thing because a lot of times in other games such as uh, Call of Duty or uh, Battlefield, games that introduce loot packs, they are successful as far as getting, you know, crowds to, especially the younger crowd, to ask their parents for money to, to buy more things in the game, right? But as far as um, the more seasoned player who doesn't necessarily care about any of the skins or anything, they just want to play a good game, will there start to become parts that need to be purchased that it basically has to come down to um, 
purchasing with real money loot packs in the end. And it seems like every model that starts out with in-game credits eventually ends up into real life money trying to buy in-game credits or um, they, it becomes so unattainable that you have to spend real money basically. And I, I think that might uh, hurt the game. I mean, because will we still have the option? If I like a skin, can I just buy it outright instead of having to wait for it in a loot pack? Or will the loot pack be the mandatory way that you get new uh, merchandise for your weapons? I mean, I, I can't see them moving away from a model of... Uh, being able to click and purchase a new skin I, I just I don't think that'd be a smart move on them and I think Ubisoft's a little bit smarter than that so I have to say that I don't see it headed in this direction but a lot of times then what's the purpose of the loot pack if you can just go ahead and buy the ones that you want what's the purpose of it I mean, you might argue and say that, hey, well, maybe it's cheaper in the loot pack if you happen to get like a an elite skin or something or uh, a really rare one that you wanted that costs a lot. But if you get it in a loot pack, it's significantly less. Well, it depends if you get it on the first time or not. If you get it on the first time, yeah, it's less. But if you don't, then you end up spending more credits to try and get the same one that you wanted to start with when you finally get it it's a little bit rewarding but then you look back and you're like i spent so many credits when i used to be able just to buy it but i mean all in all i think the game's uh headed in a good direction still i mean the influx of players are still up and uh, i like the new adjustments that rainbow six has been making so I want to say thank you for watching. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the gameplay. Uh, made, uh, some fused lucky and unlucky kills. Got a couple of multi-kills in there. But um, like, subscribe, and uh, hope to bring you guys more content and comment for uh, anything you guys would like to see. All right. Have a great day.